Hey everybody, it's me, it's Truck Doug. I just wanted to uh, show a couple of the offerings I have on my eBay store. And I'm just over here grabbing this, which is a milk pump. I offer this service now uh, through my website. What I'd like to do is to order up a stock of these and just have a few on the shelf. Um, cases, less easy to come by. Hopefully, I should have a pretty good stock of cores coming in that had all the bells busted. <clears throat> the United States government and its infinite wisdom in uh, removing itself from Afghanistan, they had to get a bunch of Hummers, which use for all ADEs, back to the States so they didn't fall into the hands of the bad guys. Space saving measure involved using a uh, big ass fucking hammer and smashing the bell housings off. So tons of good uh, core units with bad cases. So I'm gonna buy them and uh, hopefully they're not so smashed up that I can't mill the bells down and and run an SFI bell with them and then offer a stock of them and maybe make a couple bucks. But I just wanted to offer or show you what, what I'm offering up. Like I said, I, I offer this service $200 to do this to your pump. Um, it would be probably another 200 to do the case. Uh, if you buy a transmission from me, that is $300 instead of $400. Um, I'm having my own HD separator plates made. Uh, I did this because there are some nice things that you can do. You can dual feed from here without plugging the case. That's probably the number one thing. Uh, number two is uh, I've eliminated the entire accumulator valve train. So no, no one, two accumulator, no two, three, and no 3.4 accumulator. It just runs just like a TH400 with the first gear accumulator removed. Um, this makes for a really nice firm shifting uh, unit and no cross leaks from the accumulators or any BS like that. I would recommend that you keep the shift feed orifices uh, as stock if you have a near stock stall converter. If you have a looser converter, like a 3000 RPM stall to eat up some of the shift harshness, then you can start opening these up. They're roughly, they range from uh, 80 thou. The one two shift is at 80 thou, and that's as big as I would go unless you have uh, a looser converter. Um, another thing that I offer is the 3-4 accumulator plate or accumulator delete. I would use this if I were using a stock separator plate. This separator, this separator plate, you can use your stock 3-4 accumulator housing and its bolts and just bolt it on here. That'll delete those accumulators completely because all these hydraulic passages here are blocked off. I have another example here. This is the same part as this, but it's got a hole here uh, that I tap for the trans brake solenoid. So when I start offering trans brakes, this will, you'll see this piece in action. Uh, another piece that I have made is this uh, intermediate, intermediate clutch piston spring retainer. The stock late style one is really flimsy. Um, so what I do is I peel, it comes with nine springs I peel six of them off and, uh, and run it that way, uh, where, where there's, uh, you could run three per section, I run two per section. And that seems plenty enough to keep the piston clear, but not so much spring force that it creates a harsh uh, second gear apply. With that, I also suggest that you either use the stock late style thin wavy or get yourself uh, an early thick wavy. I always run a wavy in the intermediate. Uh, very, very rarely 
does a customer talk me into running no wavy in the second gear it's it's i think it is one of the best ways to keep your intermediate sprag alive it just slows down the application of that clutch just enough so uh you know it doesn't create a jerk on that intermediate uh 32 element dog bone spray. I also now offer uh, pump wear plates. Um, have these made locally, and these have shown to be awesome in just about every application from full tilt, 220 psi fixed line pressure units to 160 psi stock units. Uh, these are a really nice way to not only save a uh, beat up stator side of your pump, but also extend the longevity between refreshes. Um, this is a lot tougher material than the stock cast iron. And with that, it's a little bit slicker too. So as long as you have enough lube oil and your converter isn't buried all the way into the gears, then this should work really good for you. This works on all your uh, 4L80Es. I also offer it for the TS400. Um, every unit I build gets one of these, whether it's a basic bitch box truck build to the rowdiest stuff that I send out, you know, 2000 horsepower, uh, 2500 foot pound, dirty max uh, units. And then the last thing is actually a, a uh, tool, but it's going away soon. This is my last batch of these. This is a uh, transmission holding device. I have them up for 175 plus shipping, probably run you about 200 bucks to get it to you. And this will hold 4L80Es and TH400s. And uh, let me just show you how it works. It goes in your just regular Harbor Freight, uh, you know, four wheel, or you could probably get it away with throwing it in a three wheel. I like these four wheel ones, but these uh, bosses are exactly for this. These are for service uses. And for a Teach 400, the case is a little thicker around here. So you gotta run those, run these adjuster bolts all the way out. And for a 4L80E, it's a little thinner through that section. So you gotta run these bolts all the way in. But it does fit both. And it'll last a lifetime. Uh, TIG welded, powder coated, everything about it is made in the USA, right down to the bolts. And uh, yeah, if you didn't know I offered that stuff, then uh, there you go. I am looking to add a couple more things to my uh, to my inventory. I have D1 trans brake separator plates coming. Uh, if you if you know anything about the D1, it's just a separator plate and and some wiring modifications that create the D1. Um, I don't use them personally, but I have had people ask me to to make them and supply them, so I should have some of those plates on hand. They'll also be sixty five dollars. Uh, just like my HD plate. I should have, uh, let me do about a month of guinea pig testing. I should have uh, D3 automatic trans brake valve bodies uh, available. Those are gonna be $900 alone and uh, very, very limited warranty. I'm gonna check them all for functionality, come up with good instructions and the rest is gonna be on you. At the time of the purchase, you'll be able to spend an extra 200 bucks and buy an hour of my time to help you diagnose and troubleshoot problems. But if you build your transmission the way I detail in the instructions, you won't have any problems. That being said, caveat emptor, uh, trans brakes are hard on parts. You're probably gonna burn a reverse band. Uh, they, just, they just eat bushings and unless you need a trans brake to get to that next level in racing don't put one in your car it's hard on your uh main bearings in your in your engine it's 
it creates a ton of extra heat in your transmission it it's a it creates more wear items than you would than you would really think um, that said i've had uh well-built units that i've sent out like my brown car unit that's gone three years now without being touched so it is possible but you're gonna have to pay extra attention and really dot all your i's and cross your t's uh, some of the other interesting projects that I'm going to be working on. Uh, no longer are TH400 electronic speedo sensors available. I have an adapter that creates a solution that uses a uh, speed sensor from another GM transmission. Uh, works the same way. It's, it's a two wire system and uh, it'll work with 40 pulse pulses just like um, the original TH400 one, uh, for, 40 tooth gear rather, and that gear is available. Uh, it's, it's a metal one so it needs to be heated and slid on in place, but basically it just slides into place where the, <clears throat> the speedo gear would have been captured. Right here. You heat it up, slides right down on there everything's Bob's your uncle that is still available the sensor is not available used ones good used examples go for upwards of $400 when I find them I sell them on eBay but uh, I created an adapter ring for this car and I'm looking at the cost of getting them turned on a CNC lathe and cranking out a bunch it uses basically it's just an adapter that uses a second o-ring to upsize it to the opening and position it in the correct position. Once I uh, once I finalize some uh, DXF so I can send to the machine shop, um, I'll get a quote back and I'll let you know what the price on that is. And then I'll have the part number for the sensor, the part number for the pigtail, and maybe write up a little blurb on how to set it up in your Holly, um, which will be a really nice thing. I think of all the ways to get a speedo sensor on a th400 uh having an electronic speedo output coming right off the output shaft is the nicest one having one of those um, dakota digital cable drive to uh some bitchy kind of a kind of a hassle um because you're still i mean i guess you can fudge the output a little bit in Holly, but still the ideal way to do it is to have the correct speedo gear for your setup. So it just is a one to one ratio and you don't have to do any math. But those are my offerings as of right now. If you have anything that you would like to see, or if you've seen anything, see me make anything, uh, you know, I was thinking about perhaps revisiting my idea of a rear pickup for the 4L80E. Um, I feel like there's some soft spots on the budget side of that. Um, I really just need to kind of figure out how to simplify um, instead of multiple welded and machined pieces. Maybe I can do something that's just a tube with and, and you know, the end of it is flattened out and I can bolt my filter right on to the end of that but we'll see i got some playing to do if and then like i said if you if there's anything you'd like to see let me know i'm gonna put a link to my uh ebay or my uh squarespace store so you can check it out for yourself and uh talk to you guys later thanks